Go Light presents the Talking Bollocks podcast. The hip knocker. Episode 62 of the Talking Bollocks podcast brought to you by Go Loud. It's me, CLB. It's me, Harry Glower. And today we're joined by... Roddy Collins. Roddy Collins. How are you, Roddy? Or Roderick, as I was christened. Roderick, the big yeah, fella. When I was in Carberry, it was Roddy or Rodney when I was growing up. And you know the way the, the song, uh, what's his name? Johnny Cash, a boy called Sue. Yeah. Well, I mean, imagine me called Roderick and Cabra back in the fucking <laughs> 60s. Oh, yeah, little sap, yeah, Roderick. You know, so yeah, it's Roderick when it suits. So, here, yeah, they used to call you Rodney, but you come in here dressed as Del Boy. There you go. Yeah. There you go. There you so go. Before we kick this off, I have these little two little messages here. So, these are the last two ever tickets to our live show next Friday, 4th of March in Liberty Hall. And for you to be in with a chance of winning this, we're going to release a special word in this podcast, the magic word. Terence has a pick, though. Yeah, I'm not going to say it yet. He won't say it yet. When you get this magic word, you need to email it to info at goloudnow.com. Right, boom. That's that box stop. I'm going to jump into the singers, Roddy. Did you ever listen to an episode of this? We did. Yeah? What do you think of it? Well, that's why I'm here. Love I'm here to sort the pair of you's out. Two, <laughs> two townies moving up to my patch and cabra. Nah, I think it's great, lads. I'm, I'm actually proud of you, you know, two good young Dublin men yeah. having a bash. Yeah. Going the right road, doing what's right in life, and I'm, I'll give you 10 out of 10. So, no, pleasure, no, pleasure no. to be here, boys. Pleasure to be legend, here. Legend, mate. Legend. Yeah. Legend. But don't use the C word. If you use it once, right? Oh, yeah, Me I'm and you out there, I'm a heavyweight, right? <laughs> out there, right? <laughs> A dance off. <laughs> we do a thing the called. The magic word is not the C word, though. No, no. <laughs> you get that out there, yeah. <laughs> see you next Tuesday. None of that in this yeah, podcast. Yeah. yeah. Um, we do a thing called Zingers Ready, yeah? Yeah. It's just like an either or or a would you rather or something like yeah. that, yeah? But we're at our wits end with them, so. Would you rather? These are. I don't even want to ask you this one. Right, we'll jump into the next one. Right, see when you're training cardio. Yeah. Would you rather train in cold weather or warm weather? Warm weather. Warm weather, yeah. A hundred percent. Always. I even no, no. Even when I played professionally, I loved the real hot, warm days. I loved it. Yeah. Yeah, the you cardio. Can't, you know, you can't breathe. No, no. Oh, I, oh, you no. start off and you're already tired. No. Ah, no, no, no. Well, you're obviously not hydrated. You know what I mean? You're going back in the day. Well, when we played football, our hydrate rehydration was in a game on Sunday. <laughs> To the bar as quick as possible. <laughs> 12, 15 points, couple of bottles of wine on Lisa Street. We still wrecked by Tuesday. But no, I, I love the sun. Yeah. I actually always train. I'd, I'd actually rather live in the sun, to be honest with you. Mm. Would you, yeah? Yeah. I spend a lot of time out in the, in the sun. Yeah. Not for the sun. I don't sunbathe, but walk. And I do a lot of walk and sea swimming and that. So. For the vitamin D. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to go for the season in Monday day, shall we? Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, the 40 foot. Yeah. yeah. I, I brought, brought Carlisle down there when I was. When I was manager, Carl had brought them. I nearly lost two of the players. <laughs> Paul, I did. I swear to God, Paul Raven, Paul Raven, and Stevie Livingston. And he seen a, a bleeding boy that was. It wasn't that fair. I'm a good elsewhere, but they had to go, and they got caught in the current, and they barely made it back. And I was praying that the current would take them off to a brutal. <laughs> <laughs> Re- release two wages from you. I'm only joking. They were great lads. They were young. Know, great lads. <laughs> yeah. But you're asking about the zinger. I thought the zinger was a burger. Because when we I played in the north of Ireland, right, we used to stop in Newry on the way back and we go into the Wimpy. Was it Wimpy or was it... What's your man? The Captain Corner. What was his name? The Chicken. KFC. Something like that, yeah. And we used to get a zinger burger. That's the only time I heard that word before, so... The zinger is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone sent us that before. I didn't yeah, realise yeah. that. Yeah, the zinger, zinger, zinger okay, I've seen Where yeah. did zinger come from? I don't know. You come up I, with it one day. I think Gavin Power might have come up with that one day. Yeah. I thought it was you. You'd have said it one day and I was like, all right, we'll call the it zinger that. Then. So yeah. it's going to be a new word in the dictionary, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Rephrased for Fair talking bollocks. So the percentage as well is 67% rather train in cold weather, 33% for warm weather, yeah? Yeah. Right, the next one. What was this one? The calves licks or the drive-ins? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so would you rather have two bad calves licks or two bad drive-ins? 
two where bad calves, calves legs. How do you mean drive-ins? Do you know where, where a hairline goes in? Ah, like that. Yeah, but that's flesh. That's not going anywhere. Yeah, it's really. not tight, boy. No, that's... What, you're, you're 60 years of age. 61, 61. Yeah. 60 in the Wikipedia because I forged my bird shirt <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> I got a... I got a bear head down the blue line, right? The pub? It, yeah. Yeah. The blue line, yeah. name fails, done it for me. Before I, before I went to England to play football, I was 25, and uh, that was a bit old. So I went down and got a little job done, and oh. sent her away with a few letters and got a contract in England for two and a half years. So, yeah, that's the... That's, <laughs> two calves leaks. I'd rather have two calves leaks all day long. Yeah. 80% rather than the calves leaks, 20% rather than the dry yeah. leaks. Yeah, boys? Yeah. yeah. The next one. Right, Terence is afraid to ask you this one, right? This is what we had from last week. I Roddy. remember they asked Roddy Doyle something like this along along them lines and he went white, he did. Yeah. It says, would you rather have sex on the beach or in a car? And we don't mean the cocktail. Mm. No comment. No comment. You don't have to answer it. It's no. grand. No comment. No, we leave it at that. No, we leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have to answer this one. This is one we ask all. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Do you piss in the shower? No. No, you're a lawyer. You're right. <laughs> 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 we, we, we know we know where we're coming from. Yeah. Right? <laughs> There's only two types of people in the world, Ruddy. People that piss in the shower and lawyers. Well, I wouldn't use that word P-I-S-S. I would say I sometimes get caught. You know, at my age, it's very hard, like, you know. And uh, <laughs> to leave the shower when it's lovely and warm and to go three feet over to the urinal or whatever you want to call it, I'm a bit lazy there now. So, yeah, I am Billy Lord on that yeah, one, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. It's no, I have no shame for it. You? Yeah. yeah. All the time. Yeah. Most of the time. I'm about swimming pill. 56% of people rather have sex in a car. Yeah. I'm surprised by 44 for the beach. That's a close enough one, that is. Yeah, yeah. it's nearly a 50 yeah. 50. So, that's that. Right, if I hit yeah. this camera, I want 50 quid, yeah. No danger there. Man, have you got one for this week? I'm just going to rob one that people are sending in from last week. So see the way we said drive-ins? Yeah. Do you call them drive-ins or car, car parks? Yeah, I call them a car park. Yeah, I call them car parks. Why did we say Gavin Power said it, did he, last yeah. week? Yeah. Do you know what we're talking about when we say that? Car parks and drive-ins. Yeah, but a seeding line, look. You know where the hairline goes, back. Here's the mad in your world. Yeah, <laughs> I never there. heard that, no. Would you not call it that? What did no, you call it back in the day? Baldy pal. <laughs> yeah. The old skate rink is getting a little bit bigger. Are you blessing yourself like that now? You know, that was, that was the thing. I mean, are you calm over a bit, ropey? You know, but. Right, that's my zinger then, anyways. Right, I have one, yeah. Uh, this one I heard a while ago, and I forgot all about it. And then my missus said it to me the other day. She said she heard it on the radio. So someone out there will probably call me out by robbing it on them. But Stephen's green, yeah? Yeah. Is that at the top or the bottom of Grampton Street? I would say it's at the bottom. It's at the bottom. I'd say it's yeah. at the top. I couldn't tell yes. you. Where's O'Connell Bridge? O'Connell, at the bottom of O'Connell Street. No, it's not. It's in Stevens Green. What? Yeah. The one on O'Connell Street was Carlisle Bridge. It's O'Connell Street now. It's O'Connell Bridge now. You go into Stevens Green. Now the little stone bridge over it. O'Connell Bridge. Where's the smallest street in Dublin? Little tree. No, <laughs> no, tiny street. No, it's called Palace Street. Right? And you know the Olympia? Yeah, yeah. You know across the road, there's a little French restaurant in the corner. You turn left down to the George pub. You know where your man was pouring the drinks down everyone's throat and they shut it down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In there, right? That's the smallest street in Dublin. Oh, there you go. I know me Dublin. I'm in Dublin twice a week walking the streets. I know every every homeless chap. I know every uh, preacher. I know them all. I go in and I love it. It's brilliant. Yeah. Great city. Yeah, well, we have a tourist in your own city. No, oh, yeah, he was wrong, man. I shell shot for the first time when we got this deal. <laughs> oh, he's never over here, buddy. Never. Just over the lip in your life. Oh, I said it to come before we went to a party, a christening there a couple of months ago. Yeah, and when I came out of the pub, I said, If you had to drop me there, and yeah. tell me down the road, if you had to drop me there, I said, Find your way home, I'd have never found my way home. Last two weeks ago, my uncle Parrick had to go to the iron here. Right? And I went into Louis Copeland and Cable Street. To, I dropped them off, went around the street, put an hour on Louis, have a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, whatever. And I rang him. I said, Parley, when you're leaving, or I said, when you're leaving there, ring me. Right? And I said, I'll meet you in Harker Street. Now, the eye in there to Harker Street, five, ten minutes walk. Half an hour out, I couldn't find him. He was out there Google on some other stupid street and he was walking around town. He didn't know. 
Yeah. And this is what I can't get my head around. But I'm an elf. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was born in our city, Carbra. My wife, I'd have any guards, hung around town. Yeah. My first disco was mm -hmm. town and the whole lot. So, but it's a great city. Yeah. yeah. Everyone yeah, should get to know it. You know what I mean? Do you know what? Look at that, Roddy. If you told us a name of a street, I wouldn't be able to get there. But if you told me like a place, I yeah. know where that is. Do you yeah. know what I mean? If a I landmark. Mean, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I'd, I'd get that quick. Like, like back in the day, they'd say, they say, I'll meet you in Cable Street, right? What's the nearest pub? Well, they say Slattery's. Mm. You know what I mean? That's how back in the day, what's the nearest pub then you'd find, you know, meet you there. But that, look, yeah. that's my old Dublin. It's, yeah, it's a little bit mm. sad now at the moment. You know what I mean? But that's young people. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, Fair yeah. play. Just we respect you mm. for it. Yeah, well, you know, we were our leaders going around, <coughs> cars, you know. Well, oh, come here, you say <coughs> Stephen Train's the bottom of Grand Street. Well, I, I'd imagine it was the bottom, yeah. And what do you think? I don't, I wouldn't, I've never thought about it, yeah. But well, it depends now, on what do you think? You see, you see, the way it is, I come over from the north side, yeah. I walk up Grant Street. Exactly, yeah, but mm. Grant Street's a hill. So yeah, yeah, well, if you the come top over, of the hill is Stephen Train, if you come from the south side, Calvin, yeah, you're not going to say, I'm walking up. No, you say you're walking down. Grand Unless Street. you go down backwards and pretend you're walking up. <laughs> you don't walk that? down it. No, like you're Michael that? Jackson. <laughs> right, so that's my one by this oh, week, yeah. yeah. It's Stephen's Green, the top of the bottom of Grand Street. Yeah. Right. View guard is even already. Peaky Blinders or The Sopranos. Oh, that's oh, I've never seen The Sopranos. I heard it's great. Ah, you've got to see it. The Peaky Blinders, top of the range. The new yeah. Peaky Blinders is out in a couple of weeks. The new one. Yeah. yeah, well, my one was Sopranos and Ray Donovan. Ray Dunn was the main man. Watch that one. Mm. Need to watch it's about, it. a, it's about a Nourish family in Boston, a boxing family, and they run their, their little empire from all sorts from the gym. But they've a, they've a, the, the main man in the family, Ray Donovan, ah, it's brilliant. Yeah. I've so, seen it, but then I haven't actually watched it. I've you, seen it. Like, you know what I mean? Probably be a bit dated. old for you. Yeah, yeah, a bit dated for you, yeah. but I can relate to. What's going on? Yeah, because yeah, yeah, I've yeah. been there. You know, with the boxing and that, and you see yeah. all the the shady things and the gyms and the yeah. you know the different curlies on, you know. Yeah. Mm. Right, so there's a there's a couple of them there, but it's nice yeah. one, right? Yeah, there's we'll take two them. good zingers there. Yeah, yeah. 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 didn't you? Fresh this year. Oh, we did. Yeah. yeah. What's what's the old saying? Be prepared. What the right king said. Be prepared. Yeah. 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 Fail to prepare. Prepared. That's the one. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. We take it back a bit. Yeah. Right, Roddy. What we do is we go back to the start a bit with the guests. Yeah. So. Where did you grow up? Grew up in Carbra, 12 Animal Terrace, in my granny's house. Yeah, my dad was born there, and he stayed with me, me nanny, when all the, the brothers, the five brothers, they all got married in the hall. So my mum moved in, and then we were all right in there. Yeah, number 12. How many is this, though? There was six of us. Yeah. There was seven. My little brother Pascal, he was he died young. Uh, he was between me and my other brother Pascal. So there, was, there would have been seven, but... Unfortunately, there were six, and my nanny, my mum, my dad, and you know what? So it's the camera houses there, mm. and we'd frost on the inside of the window. That's the truth. Mm. We'd frost. There was no heating back then in the house. It was cold. And my mum grew up every morning before anyone had a big coal fire blazing. Yeah. With a breakfast, it was a great happy home, you know. Yeah. And uh, that's yeah, that's where we started off, you mm. know. So when Stephen won the world title, go, jeez, how did how did how did I find out of a little gaff like this? Mm. progress and go to America and get in a mix with the top men, hagglers and all that. It was just, you know, the, my dad was a, was a great man. I mean, my dad would say, get out there, don't mind anyone. Yeah. Just get on with it. You know what I mean? Get on with it, so what? And, and see this thing about, can you do anything? I can do anything. You ask me anything. Ask me, just go on. <laughs> now ask me, can I do anything? Tell me, can I... What can you do? No, you ask me. Can, can, can you paint the room? No problem. Right? I don't know if I can or not. But see, when the book or paint comes on the brush, I'll figure it out. Yeah. And I've got through. See the Westby Hotel? Yeah. I was a plaster contractor, right? I keep spitting. I don't know what's going on here. My false teeth must be in crook. <laughs> <laughs> so I was plaster contractor, and I got a call to do this thing called MF Sealants. Right? It was a new thing. I said, I've never seen it before. And uh, it was a big contract at the Westby Hotel. And I said, of course I can do them. No problem. Jumped in a, in a car, into my car, up to Klonsky. Mick Walsh was the, the, the rep for Gypsum. He showed me. I went in. It took me about... I knelt the door. It took me about two days to get it going. And then I got about half a million walk out of it for years. So if I'd have said, no, I can't do that. You would have missed it. I would have missed it. Yeah. Before it was manager's job. Right? 
didn't know Manchester manager. I was having the crack. I was just playing. Called me coming off the pitch. Up the north of Ireland. Wilson matches Rod. He says the manager had to resign. And I thought, lovely. He's going to bring me. We're going to give me loads of money because he went to a big club. Anyway, <laughs> he said, would you take control for a month till we find the match? Yeah, no problem. I said, no problem. You know, I didn't realise driving back down to Dublin with all the mads. I was in the car. Paddy Fay and all. Fucking Richie, what's his name? Ricky, Ricky McAvoy and all the mads. I was Mark Kenny. I drove down and I went, no problem. What a fucking major problem. I've never done this before. So what age did you start playing football at then? I started when I was, ah, come here. Making your walk. Yeah. You know what I mean? We played on the terrace, on the road, road against your boy. My dad built a boxing gym out the back of the house. So every single male in the Collins family and my ma's side, the Rocks, my ma's brother was the heavyweight champ and Roddy Rocks was the first ever to box in that side of the family. All boxers. So, so boxing force. Oh, boxing. Boxing was everything. Yeah. When I started playing football, they thought, this is a bit of a Nancy boy, this fella, you know what I mean? He yeah. wants to play football. We're all batting the head off each other. So I played football. I played football um, from a young age. But serious football was the mini Olympics up in the bogies in Cabra, where we started with Tommy Moyles. And then uh, the first serious football was under 12. And that was Shelburne. It was sorry, it was it was Villa United first, and then down the rings end, Shelbourne, and we were 13. And we got on a bus, you got on the number 22, the 22 out of 12 in the Cabaret Road to Dodge Estuary, and the number three, the rings end. And you'd be only 12 or 13 with two blokes out of Kalella Road, Les Clinton and Jerry, Jerry, oh Jesus, he'd be raging. Anyway, it'll come to me, and your dad wouldn't even know. You were playing football, but wouldn't ask you. Like, you, you there wasn't like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It just everyone just played, and that's what we done. Then what happened was, I remember, uh, being boxing, sparring, boxing, be training, be coming home with hard blood up your nose. You know, to be no no headgear back then. I remember you being in school having a kip, and you'd be, oh Jesus, the fucking pain in her. You'd be blood up your nose and all that, and then. I start looking at all the superstars on telly playing football and I thought, forget about Roberto Duran and Muhammad Ali and Sugar Ray back in the day that me dad so get us all to watch. I want to be one of them. And that's where the love for football took over. Who would have been the footballers that you would have been looking at back then? George Best. Yeah. Uh, I've seen George Best. If you go back in the years, it would have been about, I think they won it in 1968, did they? Celtic 67, yeah. I was eight, yeah, I was eight yeah. watching Man United when they won the European Cup, and George Best, oh, a brilliant kid was 19 that night, it was his birthday, I'll never forget that, and I remember watching that and thinking, oh, I'd love that, and I went through all the schoolboy stuff, got trials with the, the schoolboy under 15, I didn't go on, got into an international youth, international uh, team, I got into that, right, and, but before I got into that, I went on my first trial to England for three months, I guess who was playing at the club I went to. Who? Yeah, well. George Best. What club was he playing for then? Fulham. Fulham? Yeah, he was coming down from his career. And I remember... Oh. So you met him? I met him, hey. Yeah, he was yeah. a lovely, lovely fella. Yeah. Lovely. Like, we were we were 17 at the time. He was coming to the end, but he was a superstar. Yeah. But he came over and had a chat with us. It was me and another lad, my Devney Gardens, went over and he, he went home after a week. He kept saying, we were in a big posh gaff in Richmond, right? And uh, we were getting red cabbage. We didn't even know there was such thing as red cabbage. Mm. You know, and fucking all sorts of mad food. And Paddy kept saying to me, my man's making his stew today. My man's baking and cabbage on Sunday. And I go, oh, fuck. Boy, well, I wanted to do it. And he went home anyway. But yeah, so that was it. That was a love for it then. And that then it, was that first club, wasn't <coughs> it? That was the first, first trial club. I went. And then I come back. I was there for eight weeks. And I thought I was signed the contract. But I was only signed as a registrate player. I was getting a, a, a expenses. I'd have done it for nothing. My dad come over, Arsenal come in, went over to uh, Arsenal, spent uh, a month there, and then I went to Wolverhampton Wonders. And then I come back, uh, Eddie Corcoran told me to sign my balls. He says, we'll keep it, look, see how you develop. And then I brought me leg. Two years out, well, three years actually. I was with the, with the, with the with the book. Realised it was three years before I, you know, played my balls when I was eighteen, mm. 
and then I didn't play proper again. I was nearly 22 after breaking my leg. So I lost that. Yeah. That is an important time. That's why I got it back on the bird shirt. <laughs> I said, I want that. I want that few years back. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> so what, you, didn't you, you start making the name yourself here at League of Ireland? Yeah, well, it wasn't hard to make a name in League of Ireland back then, you know. I went to, uh, where did I go? I come back, signed for Bowes, broke my leg, signed for Athlone Town, Torlock O'Connor, and brilliant fellas, the Conway's, Tom O'Conway out of Cabra, and we done brilliant. And then he sold me to draw the, draw the, was it? He sold me to draw the, I had a few, with one season there, he bought me back, and then he sold me to Mansfield Town for a, a record fee. Record fee it was back then. How much? 15 about? grand. <laughs> was it? 15 fee? grand, yeah. Record fee for, for Mansfield. So that was it. And then, you know, it's not a sad story, but it's the truth. It was just broken leg. Broken leg. That was me. Three broken legs I got there. Was one in Ireland, two there. Uh, broken, bro broken nose didn't stop me. A broken ankle. Dislocated elbow, so it's just a litany of injuries. Yeah, but it's not an excuse. I got where they got, and then I moved from Mansfield to Newport County for about two years. Out of that, Newport County back to Rovers, mm. then back to Dundalk again. Won the league with Dundalk then that year, and then I ended up in Belfast. Yeah, and See, the recovery you... back then would have been completely different than nowadays. You get me? Oh, Terence, honest to God, I, I, I look now and I I just wish. I was in a cast from there down to my ankle for six months. That's madness. To think. It wouldn't heal. It didn't heal. It normally takes 12 weeks. It didn't heal. I was in traction in the mid hospital for six weeks. Now, you know what that is. I was in a bed like that with me. They put a, a, a big bar through your heel with hooks on it, right? And it's like a pulley. You know when you're doing that? Yeah, yeah. It's like a pulley and weights on it. And if you do that, I was six weeks on my back, couldn't get out of the bed for six weeks in, in the main hospital. So, and then when you come back, your leg is like that. Yeah, yeah. no meat on it. No meat. Yeah. You see, footballers nowadays, they break their leg, they're back in fucking four months really? on the yeah. pitch in the Premier League like, yeah. at the highest level. I know. Completely I know. different. And, and the thing about it was back then, rehabilitation, you should left to yourself. Yeah, mm. yeah. You know what I mean? You know, I was doing stupid things like, you know, that wasn't beneficial, but. Uh, look, that's the way it was. Thankfully, it's not like that now, you know. Mm. Yeah. Anyone breaks their leg, it's not the end of their, their career. Yeah, no. you, you rarely hear the bleeding like career and ending injuries these days. Very you, rarely. Yeah, they, they have it all lined up. See, there's yeah. a man who was playing for Galatasaray now. A firework went off in his face a few years ago. He lost his vision. He made his. Uh, he started playing again yesterday for Galatasaray. He had like something like so many operations on his eyes like he was blind Brilliant. legally blind and now he's back playing football like, pro, like pro, pro, pro ball yeah. like, you know what I mean yeah, it's legal yeah. though like ev everything they have a solution for these days yeah yeah, yeah, you know yeah. Like well back then it wasn't like that you know but look that's the way it was you know but you dug in yeah it was different like I done a podcast last night for a football podcast and they said was football better back in your day everything was better but in your day everything. when you got to my age yeah. everything's better but the thing about it was back then they were harder yeah. The yeah. fellas were hardy. I have to say, there was no, like, you know what I mean, like, fucking fellas diving around. And yeah. I see, I see, I watched uh, France and Ireland two weeks ago, was it? Mm. Right. In the rugby. Yeah. each other. Yeah. Right. And then that evening, I watched a roundup of the roundup of the, the football league, you know, the yeah. football league. And it was, um, it was, was a Hartley pill versus someone. And the fella got a belt of a ball in the face and he was 10 minutes on the ground he went down on a stretcher. Now, I... One or did it well? Nothing wrong with him. They said at the end of the whole thing, I oh, know he was grand. There's no no repercussion, no uh, injury ongoing yeah. injury. Yeah. Fuck you, rubbish with that. Yeah. Our, our thing was when we played, right? We played with that bang. Yeah. Like that's you. I got away with more of them. I got it. I wasn't born like that. <laughs> right. Five kids now head board. <laughs> 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 but but like the thing with us was growing up. If you're hurt, you're hurt. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't get up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. If you're not hurt, you get up. You don't show him he's hurt you. And you make sure you hurt him before you're finished. Yeah. That was the way it was. Rightly or wrongly, that's the way we lived. Yeah, yeah. But, but now what it is, the repercussions of it, you know what I mean? If And you were saying about, you know, you're in Leeds on Sunday, you are milling each other and yeah. somebody stayed down and one of the commentators says, do you reckon if, he, if he's injured, the referee will book him? 
you know, the fellow who tackled him. Yeah. So if, he, if he gets up too quick, the referee will be like, oh no, he's grand. Yeah. So these players who are driving, they're playing to the to the rules, they're bending the rules. Yeah, yeah. fuck But I'm back not. then, if someone got smashed up, the referee's like, grew up in Grammar. Ah, for Jesus. Well, now if someone gets smashed up, the referee's like, you know, hold on, there could be a card here. Yeah, so exactly. like, right, if we go down now. But, but can, can I just ask you, Captain, if you were playing the game, when I played the game, yeah. my only concentration was getting that ball in the back. Now he's yeah, a striker. Yeah. That's all. I didn't care. You know, you'd play with broken toes and I used to enjoy I remember I brought my toe and I used to inject it when well, no, I the duck and inject in the home games and on the away games I'd bring the syringe with me in between the web round my little toe and then a half time top it up and play. Imagine doing that nowadays. Mm, you know, they'd say, they'd of, say yeah. you were putting bleeding speed or something up your toe, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But getting back to the so the mentality of it, it just Look, I watched that Legion again. Wasn't that great? All the tackles, the rain, the whole No one was hurt. No, no. No one was broke up. And people enjoy that, you know, that's mm. what we need. Well, mm. I don't know. As I say, I need to stop being a dinosaur, but I'm happy in my own skin yeah. where looking back. My but no, it's, you need that physicality. It is a contact sport, you know what I mean? Like, where yeah. do you draw the line? If, yeah. if two people are coming in to smash each other, you'd be like, right, well, you can't, you're going to take that physicality out. Yeah. And. What? You can't well, Calvin, the thing about it is, if the two of them are coming in to hit that ball, happy days. Yeah. Let yeah. them hurry. You yeah. know what I mean? But I've noticed the amount that's coming in over the. T- see, see, back in our day, if a fella got a name with doing that, he didn't last. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, like, I remember, me de- I said this last night, my first ever game for balls was against Dundalk in the President's Cup. And Dare McKeeley was playing for. Dundalk and Joe Borg was the captain of our team and I was 18 and I just had to come in out with a gym I fancied myself you know and he said me a man's a hermit I was like oh, fucking sorry Tim you know he was a good brother than me and I remember I went in and I whacked him ah Jesus and the ref had a word him so I said I have him now but his mates they didn't and I got stretched off yeah. you know what I mean so it was like back then it was like Every man himself, but respect at the end of it. But yeah. Never to go over it. Like my, I got my leg shattered. Mm. Right, it was a fella who didn't know what he was doing. He's playing with UCD, a student who didn't know how to tackle. He didn't mean it, but he smashed me tip and me fib. Like a nest hook it was on the ground. He didn't mean it. If he done that on purpose, the word would go around the leg. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sort him out. Yeah, yeah. That's not honest. It's like in your own business, what you're doing here. Whatever you don't do, yeah, or you don't do to another podcast or whatever, yeah, like the way you don't do. It's like, like a manager coming in and <coughs> stinging them or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. It doesn't last. Know. Yeah, it doesn't last because yeah. what happens is reputation is everything. Yeah, even to the extent where I always say, you can have all the money in the world, but when you die, the most important you live is your reputation. Yeah. yeah. That's the most for me. Yeah. For my kids to grow up and not be ducking away. Oh, my dad was this. Oh, my dad was that. That's the most important thing. So it's the same in any business. And, and in football, as a manager, I think it would be safe enough to say, if you track down 300 players, if we've managed that many, probably a lot less, if you can get two or three, maybe, that would say I'm a bastard. Right? I'll tell you why. Other than that, I've always, always done my best for them, on and off the pitch. Yeah, yeah. And that goes true. So if I sit down to sign sign the party is right, and some other man's there, you've got the billy out coming in, I'd rather look after you. Mm, if yeah. he says you're getting a tenner, you won't get nine, you won't get eleven, you'll get a tenner. Yeah. Well you look after you. And that works and that's how it goes, you know. What yeah, I mean? yeah, the word of mouth sticking to the word, yeah. So see see in your playing career. Yeah. What's the highlight of your playing career? The highlight of my playing career. Uh Jesus. Let me think. Probably make me debut in Europe. Yeah. Against Port- Sporting Lisbon or Bowes in the, in the UEFA Cup. I think it was called the UEFA Cup or whatever Cup it was. What year was that? That was 1970, or, or September 1970. I just turned 19. September 1979. And we went out to Portugal. And the day of the game, I was told I was playing. And the fellow that was playing beside me, Botley, he started absolutely planking it. And I said, What are you worried about? He said, the 60,000 or 50,000, so bleeding, what? Mm. We'll never see them again. We'll never see them again. <laughs> it's not as if you're walking down Henry Street, they have us going, you're fucking dope, you know, <laughs> fell over the ball, you know, you never see them. And there was no internet or, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? I never doubt, I thought, I, I, I went down, I went down to the world of me, and I thought the 60,000 people were going down by me. 
<laughs> they're all down with don't mind all these other fellas I'm the man yeah. and it was brilliant oh it was brilliant and I remember you learn the levels I remember a ball went over the shoulder I wasn't the quickest but I wasn't slow a little gallop and I could leave anyone behind I remember I got one on one with the goalkeeper the ball bounced I should have hit it I said no I'll let it bounce again I'll make sure by the time I went to hit it the next time it was down the other end of the pitch gone gone yeah. that's the levels yeah so I learned at a, a very young age in football that it's I'm up there it's dipping and when people look on the telly Terence you look at a game and you go I ah, should a league of Ireland is as good as that yeah. and I get slaughtered over it it's not when you actually you know what I mean how do you get it to that level competition mm. competition it's like boxing if you're inspired at the same level for years that's the level you're going to be at yeah. if you're in league of Ireland in football and you're playing against the same level, which it doesn't reach much higher in the last, whatever, years, that's the level you're going to be at, right? So this is the argument I have. People say, right, he's playing for Rovers or Bows or Shells or whatever. He should be playing for Ireland. No, he shouldn't. It's a different level. Yeah. The ball flies around. The higher you go up in football, the ball flies around the place and your decision-making has to be so quick. And your plan B has to be in there as well. And that's that goes for the managers. Mm. Something's going wrong. You correct that slowly. Before you correct it, you're two or three nil down. Yeah. You're sharp in the brain. Something's going wrong. Oh, Jesus, and no one else sees it. That's how you know the levels. You have to be proactive and Absolutely. Reactive, yeah. That's it. Yeah. It's not going saying, oh, we're one mm-hmm. then we We're going to be one down. We don't do this, so get it done now. People go, well, why did you do that? I, I managed a game in England, right? And we were in a relegation battle in Carlisle. They were always in a relegation battle. And we played Wrexham. And they hadn't... Uh, no, they hadn't lost a game at home. And they were the top scorers. Right? And I went, right, we'll go with them. If we get a goal, we've something to walk off. So we went, we missed two chances. They scored. Then they scored another one, a penalty. So I took my three best players off because we were playing Torquay the next week, mm-hmm. which was a six-pointer. We were running our games at the bottom of the, of the league, right? So we got beaten 6 nothing. Battered. And I remember my son, young Rod, uh, he was about, about 10 or 8. And I remember him coming in the dressing room afterwards and he said to me, Dad, what's the crack? Was everything going to be all right, son? Don't be worrying. He was only a kid, but he was always with me in the dugout. And he, went, and he was going around the players. Me, Dad said, it's going to be grand, right? Yeah. So I went and got interviewed afterwards. Alex Ferguson was actually at the game. His son was the manager. And I got interviewed after the game and they said, um, now, the chairman pulled me and said, did you have a row with the lads? Would you take them off? Our three best players. I said, we weren't getting that game back. We need them for next week. Oh, that's a load of crap. We went down to talk here in 1-3-1. Mm. You yeah. know what I mean? So I was planning. I half an hour into one game for seven days away. Mm. Not like, keep them all on the pitch. Keep it 3-0. And the crowd, we had about 4,000 travel supporters. You don't know what you're doing. Sacked in the morning. You know what I mean? I'm going, yeah, you know what I'm doing, all right. Yeah. The next week, you know, so that's like management is, ah, it's mad. It's, it's, people think it's about football. You have to be a coach. You have to be aware, tactically. And as you say, Calvin, you have to be see it. Yeah. You have to preempt what's going to happen and be reactive. Yeah. Well, proactive. No, sorry, proactive. Reactive, yeah. You have to be all that, right? And it's very hard to get someone that does all that. Mm. You know what I mean? And when you do, People can't understand it at times. What did you mm. do this? Why did you do that? Oh, forget about it. You know, you got to blame on the face trying to explain yeah, it. Yeah, sure. You're saying Sunday in the United match, you took Pogba on, put Fred on. I slated them on Twitter. Pogba well, like, on, Fred you know, on. Come here, 99 out of 100 Every people one. would have said the same yeah. thing. And then yeah. fucking Fred has a storm on scores. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I, yeah. I was manager out in Carlisle, right? And we had massive pressure. Uh, like, uh, talking about pressure. Right, you're starting off doing this, right? Right, you're under pressure, of course. Yeah, you want to go to the top of this business, and you will. Hopefully, you will. Right, keep it going. Right, and you'll do it. Mm-hmm. And I manage your can. I want to get to the top. So everything is pressure, pressure, pressure. So every decision you make is highlighted. Right, and if it works, grab the applause and see one game we were playing with a fella called Baldacino. It was it was a Maltese kid, but he was English. He played with Malta, and he was on the right hand side. With another kid on the left-hand side who wasn't doing it, so I thought, I'll switch Baldy over. 
Now, I'd be sitting, you'd be in the dugout, you'd be walking with me coaches, and I'd be going, for fuck's sake, Baldy, oh, Jesus, Baldy, ah, oh, Baldy, Baldy, Baldy. But in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm going to take him out and switch Baldy over. So I said, right, we'll make a change. Warm up, Calvin. Right, warm up, Calvin, right? So I'm clued in the next while the game has stopped. My assistant, Bugsy, he's on the halfway line, right, with the sub, and he's taking Baldy off. Now, it was about 15,000 at the game. I didn't want to embarrass him. So I'm going, what the fuck, Bugsy, what are you fucking doing? So he comes back over, I says, what are you doing? He says, you were saying Baldy, Baldy. I says, no, Bugsy, I was going to switch him over and take, uh, I forget the uncle's name, uh, Adam, Adam, Adam Rundle. So I was going to take Adam off. Oh, I got it wrong, I said, oh, forget about it. Yeah, man, with Don scored, right? <laughs> So I got interviewed in BBC after he says, that was a very inspired subject. I said, well, I didn't think Baldy was doing well. I thought he could do the business. <laughs> <laughs> so last night, last night, yeah, man at United, if Fred had been crap, what would you be saying today? Yeah, you made the wrong so, choice. Yeah. Sometimes they say it's mistake rather than design. If you get away with it, take it. Because in football and what you're doing in any business, people there to bring you down. If you can grab that, oh, yeah. I, I think that. management is one of them hardest or one of the worst for being criticised though. Yeah. Like every manager can be a hero and a saint one week and the next week kind of mill. Hasn't gone clear with someone, like, yeah. It's but, but, the but one minute. Mm. You can be a saint in one minute. Yeah. yeah. I, I managed in a game where I took a fella off. He was a good player. People didn't know why. There was a reason for it. I took him off after about 20 minutes. Right? Yeah, down. You are doing right, you don't anyway. I was getting a fucking pelt as I was, right? Here I was, yeah, right. Next of all, I did fucking round with the photo fish and I got sent off, right? There's only one Roddy Collins, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I go, I was like, I'm sure he five minutes ago, but that's the beauty about it. Life is a roller coaster, lads, yeah, and football is brilliant. Yeah. You're up, you're down. Look, like, I don't know if you ever seen the thing I've done, I'll tell you, I'm on you, yeah, right? Yeah. I'll tell you the story you behind the that. Yeah, I'll tell you the story behind that. <laughs> right. We were playing Shrewsbury, right? And the losers were getting relegated. And getting relegated out of the football league. Ah, oh, yeah, gone. Gone. Like, you look, I look at the, the National League now, you know, the conference. conference yeah. yeah. There's about eight teams that were in League Two or higher when I was managing England. Yeah. And they're never going to get back up, possibly, no. right? Anyway, so <clears throat> we're, um, what was I telling about there? I'm at the getting caught. I'm at getting caught at the moment. Yeah. Thinking back that anyway. So we're there, big game, full house. The manager of them was Kevin Ratcliffe, great bloke, Welsh international. Anyway, had a hug. One of us was getting sacked in the morning, which we were. Whoever was gone was getting sacked. So we go and we go two 0 down. And I looked into the dugout, and I swear to God, the lads were getting smaller. And when my eyes were gone, we put a fella on. He scored a hat trick. We won three two. And your man got sacked the next day, did he? Kevin never walked again. No way. Never, ever walked again. I don't know if he sacked the next day. It's about four games to go. Kevin never managed again. And he was a stalwart. He was a stalwart. He was a top man for everything. Won the league with everything. Mm. Played for Wales. Great bloke. I remember before the game, we did to his office. And I seen him on Sky before. We were in the hotel waiting to go down and play. And I seen him getting interviewed on Sky. And he was white. Yeah. Right. And I went in and says, Roy, Kev, what's the crack? He says, I says, one of us is gone. One of us is fucking gone tonight, you know what I mean? And he goes, and how are you fixed? He says, I'm a few, Bob. I'm all right. He says to me, how are you fixed? I have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I have nothing. But he was in, I had a house up in Castle Land. So anyway, he says, I said, if you're not in the press day, he says, you have a bottle of brandy. I said, we'll get it out there. So we fixed two little glasses of brandy. Not, oh, for bar, we're going to manage two teams. Yeah. A hug. And that was it. Brilliant. Class. So as you say, Kev, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is supposedly that's what managers do, wouldn't it? They sit around, they have a have a drink after a match or sometimes before the match. Pep well, not before it. We are always at that. Yeah, well, not before. I've never, I've never. Well, managers in England at the level I was working at, on a Friday night after all the work is done, they go out with a few drinks. Mm. I never done it. Never ever done it. Ever. Like together, like the two, the No, 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 no. no. We're all that room. background staff, and they thought I was a bit of a weirdo. We agreed to travel an awful lot, Carlo. We could end up in Torquay, Exeter. Chester, anywhere, and we go to a hotel the night before it. Uh, Andrew Jenkins, loveliest man I ever met, and the doc, uh, he looked like Einstein, I can't remember his name, 
and the physio and the assistant manager and all that, the players all go to bed, go down, have our meal together, and then go in the bar and drink. And we go to bed. Mm. And they thought it was a bit of a weirdo, but I couldn't figure that one out. Because you have to be on it. Yeah. People don't realise, you have to be so on it, it's unbelievable. If you're not, you're not doing your job correct. Yeah. You know? So what was the highlight of your managerial career then? The highlight of my managerial career the was, double. I would say, the first year in Carlisle. Keeping them in the league. Actually, it was 14. We were 14 in the league too. The day I got sacked. It was the highest time in it in years. And we were five games to go. We could have went into the playoffs. But I had a row with the owner because I brought someone to buy the club. It was a big, long story. It'll come out in the wash. <laughs> and uh, he, we secured mathematically enough points to stay in the league. So we were heading to Aintree. Me, Dave Rogers and Bugsy were... Yeah. Oh, no, we were cracked it. And my stock was right up there. Larry McMenemy touting for me. I had Barry Fry sending me things. I was getting the the the, the uh, Jeff Stelling stuff and all. This fella Collins done this on balls and he's over here. And I knew I was on the way. That was me. So it was great, great relief. I could go home because me, me family was in Ireland. But anyway, um, that was the highlight. And then I got the bullet in the car on the way home. I, ran, I, I did I done an interview afterwards and I said it's a joke I said I, a man came to buy the club the deal should have been done <coughs> I said Michael Knighton's a disgrace he didn't do it and I says I'm resigning and he heard the radio and no he heard I said it and he rang the radio and sacked me before I got out no way ah, it didn't matter but I went back in the end yeah, I went to home chat bar and I went back you know but um, that was the highlight it yeah. was, oh, I swear to God, lads, it was unbelievable. The relief. I remember the flight touching down in Dublin after that episode. Oh, Jesus. It was, it was the happiest man in the world. It was brilliant. Brilliant it was, you know? What's the lowest low of the managerial career? Because obviously the playing career is obviously the leg breaks and whatever. Yeah, well, the playing you don't... Highs and lows in playing is every time you score a goal. Yeah. yeah. Or... You win and you go into rumours and magnums. Yeah. Up around like a mad joke, you know? That was the highs and lows. But the other stuff, it's not about you. When you're a manager, I'm worried about you, I'm worried about you. Yeah, Are they yeah. going to be all right? Are they too disappointed? So, you know what I mean? But the lowest, I'll tell you the lowest point, right? I got blocked from working, right? It's a known fact. I got blacklisted. And after about five years, I got a phone call to get interviewed for a job. And I went with the interview and I was there all suited and built. And a half an hour went by past the interview time. There was no one there. I was looking at Phil. And then a fella runs in. Sorry about that. Cotton traffic. Blah, 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 blah. And walked out. And I thought, give us a bit of respect here. You know what I mean? Mm. I know I'm getting battered behind the scenes, but give us a bit of respect. And uh, next morning I was walking in the park with Caroline. And I got the phone call. I go, can I say, oh, no, they probably already had given you the job. That's why they left mm. you sitting around all that. I remember walking to the park and I got the phone call. You haven't got the job. And I swear to God, boys, let me say, took the wind down me. I don't know if you ever felt that now, right? Mm. So sucks the life out of you. I remember sitting down on a little bank of grass and I said to Carolyn, I couldn't get up. I said, can't go around and get the car. I can't get up. And that was the lowest I was ever. And Carolyn says, fuck them. Yeah. Get back up there. You have a talent. You've proved it. Just keep at it. And I remember getting back up, and I still didn't get a job a long time. You know what I mean? Mm. But I still believe now I'll get back. And where did that come from? Why do you think the personal event that air against you? Yeah. Well, come here. I was. I was never the 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 shrink sh shrink and violence. That was called it. In the media about the way the FBI was getting run, I was always very outspoken and very. Yeah very um, honest about my opinions on that mm. and it didn't wash. Mm. We all know why now because yeah. it's come out in the book, Champagne Football. Yeah. I think of a little caption in it. I'd rather dig holes in the road than do what I was asked and told. Yeah. And I'm so happy I done that because I was shouting from the rooftops, this is not right. Yeah. And all the ones are going, ah, yeah, but they're all getting a few quid out, putting their head down. and mm. You know, but anyway, look, everyone's different. We're all, we're all, as I always say, I'd rather be a tiger for a day than a sheep for the rest of my life, you know? Mm. Yeah. So that's why. That's what was happening. And I knew, I sent the solicitor's letter to one individual who was, who was banging me. 
he was really banging me and that frightened him away. You know what I mean? But uh, it was torture. Mm. It was torture, you know. I tried to go back plastering and I couldn't. I fucking got lumped out on the site. I went in, <laughs> fell asleep and I was grabbing Holland, you fucking wanker, you fucking manager of Ireland, you fucking dope, you can't even get the manager of fucking bench, but no, no, no. <laughs> Now, what am I going to do? I'm not going fucking out, I just walk out, just walk out, you know. Yeah. It was torture, but look what's through it. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant, you know. What type of manager were you? Did you love a little team talk? What? Do you know what? Honestly, when I took over balls first, right, I had a plastering company, so I didn't do it for money. Yeah. I didn't do it for money. I'd been three years out of the business completely. I got it. I just done it for a phone call I got, and I went in, and it's easy. It's the easiest job in the world because it's not about me. It's about you. It's about you. It's about all the lads, and at the end of the day, I learned Tullock O'Connor. Tullock was very good to me. Gave me a chance as a manager in Bowers back when, and as a player. And I learned if someone's kind to you, unless you're a proper little bollocks, mm. right, you'll die for them. And I'm, I've a kind nature that can turn like that. <laughs> Kindness and stupidity, I've that. That's the kind one, and that's the stupid one. And if you take me for that one, it's over. Mm. But I would give kindness and get it back in spades. And honesty, I've sacked players. And had a cup of tea with him. Mm. You know How'd what I mean? How about doing that? He just sit down and say, Terence, sorry, son. Oh, you know, I've stuck with you. You're in discipline three times, right? You're causing havoc in the dressing room, but I have a bit of a problem, Rod. What is it? Well, I'm taking a few drugs. That was one of the lads back in the day, and he had serious problems. And I know him now, and thankfully, we have a great relationship. And uh, I said, Well, I'm sorry, pal. I can't carry them. You need to sort that out yourself. I've, I've obliged to all these other young ones and a club that are paying wages and all to go and march that way. I've done me marching with you. I can't do any more. And he started roaring and crying and I swear to God, I was that much weight and crying with him. Down in Ballybock, I'll never forget it. Never forget it. <coughs> and uh, we gave him a hug. And then I said, you want to go in and have a cup of tea? And I brought him up a cup of tea. Mm. You know? And that's the way it goes. Like, it's only a game. You know? And... If you're going to be a slave and a snake, like I said to you earlier, you get the name, he's a slave and a snake. And if you want someone to dig you over, I'll say, geez, look, I remember Richie Ford. Richie's from East Wall. I played Gay Gaelic Greece Towers. I was around when Richie was born. He played for me. We played Barmouth. And he got a kick in the face, right? Now, I took Richie from Ireland to England when no one would touch him with a barge pole. He was getting terrible press. He was sent off every week. He was fucking mad. But he wasn't mad. He's a brilliant fella. Has a great family and a great, great life now. A couple of properties and all that. But I took Richie over when he, when he, when he was in his worst period of time. And he, he said it to him. He said on a television show, he said, Rod said, it doesn't matter how I do as a manager. It's how he does as a man. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he is a man now and he has a family and he, he rings me regularly. He lives in Scotland. But Richie played a game and we were in trouble and he got a kick in the face. And I need him. He was our main man. I said, Rich, I says, look. I says, I need you. I says, don't come off the pitch, please. And he played on, right? And when the game was over, he went to the hospital. He had five fractures in his face. Fucking hell. And we didn't play for, what, 12? No, no, six weeks. And next time we played, he won them plastic the masks. Mask on, yeah. But if I was a slave and a snake to Richie, Richie wouldn't have done that with me. Yeah. yeah. So it's like everything in life, give and take. So I think if you ask any of the players, I can honestly say, no matter where they go, walk around, around when I bump into an ex player, I always get a hug. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I always get a hug. So do you think most of it comes down to more man management, one to one with 100%. fellas, than tactics? But you need tactics as well. You did, yeah, but would you reckon it's more more man management than... Oh, tactics? yeah. Well, look, you see, we've all done these courses, right? We pay thousands and thousands right, to go in and listen to someone fucking preaching that have come out and read it. People young are preaching to you on a course. I know you've lived that in one leagues and managed in England. Malta. Anyway, I had to do these courses, right? But in these courses, right, I, you, you can sit down and read a manual or look at the telly and study and go... He stands here and he stands there. And when he goes here and he goes there, and he covers here and he covers there, that's tactics, right? And if they do that, we do that. That's tactics, right? But if you have a player that's going, fuck you, I'm not chasing him there. I'm not going in there. I'm not putting that extra 10 yards in and I'm busting me go for you. 
doesn't matter what tactics you have. So all the tactics in the world which you need are only relevant when you have them players. Look at Man United. Look at Man United. Yeah. Look at Leeds. They'll die for that man. Yeah. They'll die for that man. You imagine that man in the Man United dressing room. Mm. Maybe they wouldn't have him because the superstars now. Yeah. They're bigger than the managers. Yeah. All I always say, I always say this. If I walked into Old Trapper tomorrow, I'd say, right, lads, everyone in their slips. The slips is the white thing you wear on the other time. Everyone in their slips. Right? No one bring their rover, their their Bentley tomorrow. Everyone in their slips. And then you bring them all down. Take off your Rolex watch. Take the stupid colours out of your hair. And we'll all have a nice civil talk here together. And we'll go back where we came from. Because most footballers, they didn't come from elitist families. No. You know what I mean? They came from hard backgrounds. So we'll all go back and go, where did you get your first pair of boots? Me ma. Where'd your ma get them? Oh, Jesus, it was a hard job. She had to go down to the Tuggers. Or she had to go to... You know what I mean? Who brought you to the football? Well, my granddad brought me on the bus. Right. So who are you letting down? Who are you fucking letting down? That's who you're letting down. Mm. So put your Rolex back on now, lads, and we log back out and play. This is it. You see, the reason why we can do it, we lived with a superstar, slept in the same bed as a superstar. My brother. Yeah. Mm. But to me, he's, young, he's my young little, my little brother, Stephen. Mm. So, you know, it's all perception. We're all the same. Mm. Just to more handsome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, come here, what do you think then when you say a man's are getting sacked, Roddy? In England? Just in general. In England, you had Jeremy Pass at about three, six million going into yeah. the <laughs> In the lower leagues, terrible. Mm. Horrible. It's brutal. It's horrible. You know, when, when if you're dependent on management in the lower leagues and League of Ireland to, to make a future for your family in, you know, that way, in long term future security, Forget about it. But, you know, and, and the thing about it is, when you go into your first job, I did my first job up in Bangor. Tommy Casty said to me, he, he, he managed at the highest level, he said, Rod, remember one thing, you're going to be sacked. I said, I won't be sacked. Don't be brilliant. Mm. <laughs> He's right. No matter who you are, you're going to get sacked. Yeah. It's how they sack you, Calvin. Yeah. But I, the possibilities are there, they go on. Now, look, Kenny now has the Ireland job. Surely he's making ends meet there. Ah, that's a that's he's financially secure now. Yeah, probably was before he got the job, but he has a, a longevity in li- league and football that no one's ever had. You know what I mean? He's mm. he's he's been a manager from then until now, and he will always be a manager. Yeah, and fair play, he's financially secure, and I don't begrudge him a penny. But getting back to the other ones, yeah, you know, it's a hard old task, and it's a hard old job to try and do. But the, getting back to the second part, yeah. it's how you get sacked, honestly. It's 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 embarrassing, like you know what I mean. It, like I've been sacked by Waterford, Bowes, Carlisle, Waterford, Bowes, Carlisle, who else? And Rovers, and Derry. And there's a good second, and there's a bad second. And I'll give you the best second. I'll give you the worst one first. Rovers, they didn't want me, right? New people took over. We want him out of the two-year contract. Instead of sitting down saying, Rod, you have five kids, right? What can you do? We do with shake hands. Didn't. They served me a book of evidence, right? <laughs> and put a public statement out that he's been suspended for an internal investigation. Jesus. Terence, what does that mean? He's at the Robin something. Yeah. He's out there molesting someone. No he's out there doing sexual assault. He's out there robbing. He's out there being drunk. You know what I mean? And when when you're the father of children, go to school and it's a, it's a, it's not high profile, but it's profile in Ireland. Yeah. And that's going across all the the channels. I swear to God, it knocks it. You have to be you have to be strong, and you have to have great belief in your in your honesty to what's going on. Otherwise, you wouldn't go outside the hall door. Yeah. You know. And then the best one was Derry. Uh, the chairman, Philip O'Doherty, who just sold his business for two billion. I'm always late getting to the clubs. <laughs> Every club I go to is bankrupt. They're on the way to be bankrupt, right? And he just caught me up the house, sat me down, a cup of tea, and I'll never forget it. He said to me, Rod, I said to me, build onto the pitch because I was sorting that club out. It was, it was, it was, it was a joke. 
And uh, he said to me, Rod, you know why you're here, don't you? And I'm sitting on this big table. And I said, well, you're not giving me a rise. <laughs> he says, no, you're finished. And we had a chat, had a cup of coffee, had a hug, and came to an agreement. I was still friends with him, you know? Yeah. So, so there's ways of doing it. Like, yeah. like, like, be civil. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Even when you're, you know, when you're like letting a player go, you have to be civil. Yeah. It's only a game. Human aspect to it. Like, That's you know it. I mean? mm. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like my kids, my kids were bullied. Well, they wouldn't be bullied now. They can well, well say, they look at themselves. No, well, I, I don't mean bullied, but ridiculed over me mm. for that Rovers thing. You know, that wasn't nice. Like, you know what I mean? They were getting on a little bit. Like, they weren't kids. And then school, what did your dad do? What did your dad do? You know what I mean? So, that's not nice. That's yeah. not easy, no. It's not good, no. It's does it get easier to get every second? Is it? Does it get easier the more it happens here, Ruddy? Uh, well, let me think. It depends on how. Like, why would you get sacked? Results. Well, I got sacked out with Derry and we only lost two games. Mm. It wasn't results and I know that. Everyone knows that. Um, where where was I sacked? Carlisle, nothing to do with football results. Nothing to do with football results. Um, it depends. When you sit down, like, like your own self-confidence, you'd sit down and you go, well, they sacked me because of that. So maybe I'm losing it. Or maybe I didn't do this. Or maybe this. And then you'll analyze it. And you go, oh, hold on now. Hold on a minute now. You know what I mean? I was banging on on that situation. Then you get to the back of everything. There's always reasons. They mightn't like you. Yeah. Bowers, they didn't like me in Bowers. I know that. Mm. You know what I mean? You win a double, you get sacked. Boy, they didn't like me. That's life. No one has to like anyone. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. Does it get easier? No. I'll tell you when I get my next second. <laughs> we'll come in. <laughs> we do the award now before we move on. Yeah, yeah. so what's the award, Terence? What award are we going with? Well, you, you pick We're going with tentative? Yeah. yeah. Some people, yeah, right. The award that you have to send, what's the oak? Info at goaloud. So info at goaloudnow.com. And the word is tentative, and we'll explain it at the live show. It's a long story. We're not going to get into it now, but we'll explain it at the live show. So make sure you apply for the tickets to find out. And call us over in case you forget. Oi, bang on. That's Open a big on. word, by the way. Tentative, <laughs> the tentative, fella. It's a long What's story. What's the biggest word you ever remember when you're growing up? Oh, supercalifragilistic SPL of those. Yeah, but isn't yeah, it? No, that one. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what my one was? Newtown Mount Candy. We used to go to Coral Town at Holliers. That's the truth. Down to Core Town, through Shank Hill, Bright Holler, and you come up into a place called New Town Mount Kennedy. That's well, the biggest word. Yeah. That's the, and check your. That's a name, that, though. That doesn't count as a word. Doesn't it? But it's the biggest. That's super well, friendly, because you listen to a bleeding song. That, yeah, <laughs> valid point yeah. as well. Uh, onomatopoeia is a big one as well. Onomatopoeia. What is it? Yeah. What's that mean? Onomatopoeia. It's the, it's the noise. It's like when the noise is the word, like thump. You know, ah, noise that comes. I get you. That's on a matter pay a bang, yeah. yeah. That's on a matter What does what does Nully see to Nietzsche? Ketty or some? He again. played left wing or Carl Oil. No. <laughs> no. No. What what does that mean? Nully Nully see to Nietzsche Ketty or some. Is that uh Latin? Yeah. How does you know that? I don't know what it means so. though. Uh, uh, guess. Like put it this way. If someone's coming down on you. No lay see no lay see to Nietzsche Tetty or some. Don't keep getting now, now, an expert in the, the Latin, but it does mean yeah. a certain thing because it was coming at me from all angles when I was younger. Yeah. And a fella leaned into me here and I he said, Nilly, see, Tennessee, Tetty, or something. I went, He's off the fucking wall. Fuck off. I need a bit of support. Do you know what it means? What? Don't let the bastards get you down. Oh, there you go. Learn something new every day. Every day. There you, you go. Know, there you there you go. Bloody. So you know Latin and all now. <laughs> and big words. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, bloody. What do you think of the League of Ireland today? To back in your day. You know, the players have... are fair. The players are technically better. Yeah. Some of the grounds are better. The rest is crap. The attendance oh. has gone up in, for most teams. Yeah, Pick good. Yourselves. Yeah, good. And um, long may it last. I was in Talca on Friday night. Um, the attendance has gone up. Uh, the players on which fair, technically it's better, it's quicker. Um, but the facilities are an absolute joke. Yeah. Holger Park is a dump. Daly is a dump. Oriel is a dump. Finn Herbst is a dump. Drod is a dump. Bray is a dump. Who are we miss now here? There's not many that I didn't say is a dump. Cork's all right. Rovers' uh, talent is fantastic. 
Derry's a lovely little stadium now. Thailand you know, would be probably better than some of the fucking teams in the championship in England. Well, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be. Oh, well, yeah. no, it would be more modern. Yeah. But, you know, Carlisle should be a championship team. Yeah. Right? And that, that would be a, a proper football ground. But I've I done a, a thing last night. I was in a game in England in uh, oh, Wimborne. The seventh tier football, right? Wimborne. Before the game, I sat down, right? And they sent me the menu. It was chicken something and white wine sauce with um, roasted uh, potato skinned somethings, right? It was bleeding chips, by the way. But it was, it was chips. And I sat down before the game in a beautiful, big, warm arena or, or indoor venue. Had that. About 200 people there talking. I went down, sat in a little stand, probably about 2,000, maybe maybe only a 1,000 seat or stand smaller. But it was great. It was warm. It was well sheltered. Bill table. Left at half time. I left before the game. So I don't have a coffee at half time and a, a sandwich. Went in. Back to the table was the coffee me sandwich. And afterwards, I went in, and the, the, the away team had a meal. That was the seventh here. Mm -hmm. mm. You know what I mean? On the pitch, they wouldn't last in two minutes in the League of Ireland. Maybe the first division to get away with it, but they wouldn't last against Rovers and top teams. But it was a great day. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, talk apart your night, I thought it was brilliant, because I was watching from a, a coach's and a manager's point of view for, for Damien Duff. What could they see there? But see the rest of it. Miserable. Freezing. Horrendous it was. You know what I mean? And that hasn't changed. I went down and I was eight with my uncle. And it's nothing's changed. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. sorry, football, yeah, definitely improved. Standard definitely improved. Would my Bowers team that won the Dublin and done well in Europe beat the Rovers team of today? No. Yeah. yeah. No. Would my Bowers team have. of the same players playing at the level with the same facilities and as you said earlier? Yeah. You know, medical and a whole lot. It's, it's improved immensely since I played, even the pitches. But the, the whole experience is fucking crap. Yeah. I know, I see where you're coming from. Sure, there's still bleeding grounds in the top division now, and the stands aren't even fit for football. So you're going into but these grounds, stands. They're shell-bound, you know. They built a stand. They couldn't open it. That's the only thing they've built in the last... Well, I can only go back to when I was eight years of age. I had that one up. The only thing they've improved is that stand. And it was empty tonight because it's not structural. Structurally not safe. For Jesus' sake, how many more years do you have to take? Uh, but look, I'm 40 odd years in the League of Women Football. And if you've asked me this question, 40 years gone, there's only four years now, or two years, and I'm a quick learner. I'll be saying the same things. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, oh, you're a mouth, you're this, you're that. Well, okay. But I'm, am I telling lies? No. And look, the appetite is there. And you can, as I was saying, Terrence, like the attendance is grown. I think the appetite is there. And the fact that with Brexit and now, Young blacks aren't looking across the water as early on in their career. They know that they can establish themselves here before yeah. going away. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then if you look at the likes of Graham Book and Jack Bone, who we've had on this podcast, they've come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah and brilliant. Two players, brilliant you know players. I mean? Yeah. So and probably financially. Yeah. A good financial decision yeah, for it, them as well. These days. It, it is improving. So like yeah. the appetite is there. So, so like what? Like what? What I, else do we need? I, I think I think Rovers and the main men now. Mm. On, Everyone wants to follow, like on but off the pitch. Yeah, I'm not saying to follow as a club, the structure, the, the academy, yeah. the the, the staff they have there. As like follow their blueprint. I mean, yeah, sorry, yeah. Yeah, 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 follow their. Blueprint. I would yeah. say that, Calvin. I would say that. Yeah, yeah. And they've been working at that for years, mm. getting the, the the academy going, and so suddenly, I done a done dark one last night. Boom and bust done dark. Gone. Probably have a go again, but Rovers will be there. I would say at the top end for the next 20 years on what they're building now. And that's, I, come here, I was the first one ever to put a full-time <laughs> professional team on a, on a, on a League of Ireland pitch. Mm. Ever. Right? How long ago was that? 22 years ago? You know what I mean? Fucking. And what? I go, I was washing the gear. Me, me, me missus was helping to wash the gear. I was trying to make it professional. Mm. You know what I mean? Because I wanted to be right. And we got the success out of it. But as soon as I got the bullet, they threw money at it. We made a profit at Bowes, by the way. When I was the manager, people said to me, oh, your budget, my budget wasn't the biggest. It was probably the fourth biggest in the league. But because we got the European, the GM, there's loads of dough on that. You know what I mean? People need to know that there was money made. And But then, look. You know what I mean? Mm. 
Yeah. Yeah, but it's like the bank they had half a while, honestly. Mm. I'm fed up. Yeah. But there's young people out country. Oh, I ask you a question, right? Go back in the last 20 years, how many managers have won doubles, legs, cups, that are still young enough to manage because it's not it's it's not a it's 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 not a young man's game anymore because it's fucking all coaching and, and t- or all tactics and, and 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 talking right. Name them. You can't. Mm. I could name and I named them now. Dermot McKeely won multiple trophies. Pat Fennan multiple trophies. Paul Dillon multiple trophies. Damon Richardson multiple trophies. I've had my fair share of wins. You've got Felix Healy up the north, you got Pat Dolan, all still well energised and well able to keep going. But why are we not working in the League of Ireland? Because it takes you in, sucks all your enthusiasm, everything you have, out the other end. Then you get another load of young fellas coming along, like you've the, the lad Bradley up in, in Rovers. Rovers, but he's in a good environment. You've, you've the lad in Donnelly, Donnellan, what's his name? O'Donnell. Adam and Cork, you have him, you've got Tim McClatch up there. Come back in five years, six years, where'll they be? It just eats you up, drains you. What did Damien Duff say the other day? Getting the team ready is great. Everything he says, but the SHIT, what to do before this game was wearing me out. What do you think he's talking about that? Well, I'd say he's talking about planning the, the pre match meals, uh, making sure the, the, the dressing room is, is equipped properly, whatever. Like football, we haven't played a football match. Yeah. Oh, they're planning to have it right for the lads. Like today, that's gone right. That'll rattle you. Do you know what I mean? You, you, you go in. We played, we played Halifax in a game one night in England. I night to go to a meeting and I follow on down in a car. And when we arrived, it was relegation. We got, they, they were relegated that night. It was a good Friday. And I remember we were coming down and my assistant around me says, Rod, we're in the ground here, he said. There's no lights in the dressing room. And I said, so? He says, directing the bollocks. Right? And I says, well, start the sing song. He says, what? I said, you know a lot of songs. He's from there. He's great, man. I went, sing a song. <laughs> so we started singing a song. I'll sing the song. And they went, they're, they're not getting rattled. Five minutes later, the lights went back on. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But they would have been rattled. Yeah. Like when I was manager at Carlisle, and the Southern Club's coming up, right? The, the Luton Towns or the, the Leighton Orient and that, right? Book of water on the dressing room floor, right? Fluorescent lights, take most of them out. Plug on the wall, disconnect it. No music. Depressing, lighting and wet floors. And batting them. Because mm-hmm. the minute they walked in, they went, fuck you now, mate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fucking kip. We yeah. go, we wait, we here. That's all. The thing and preparation, everything. You had a good story about preparation about when you went down the waterfall with Bowes. Yeah, tell us that one. Well, that was that was probably what's called usual initiative. I'm on the bus going down. We had a big game playing Waterford, and we're going down on the bus. We're cutting traffic on the nice Joe carriageway. You know, you're thinking, and next to all, we get the bu- the billio. There's walk on the bridge in Waterford. The road is shut off for a certain amount of time and the lads are going, oh, Jesus, we'd only get 10 minutes warm-up, five minutes warm-up, blah, 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 blah. I said nothing, you know. So I just thought, I said, the lads, right, lads, I says, um, kick off as a half seven, put back the court, eh? we'd be grand. Right, pulled the bus off the side of the road, took the gear out, kit out, picked the team on the bus, put the lads in that gear, had the team talk, gave them our post-match field, Right, which was a little bit of pasta and that. On the bus, we arrived much more prepared, better prepared than they were expecting us to arrive. They were going, these would be all over the shop. So, do you know what I'm saying? If we'd have just said, oh, Jesus, and arrived, and the rep gives you 15 minutes, get your gear on, get out, warm up, rattled. no grub. Oh, you'd be rattled. Yeah. I've seen it in boxing. I've seen Stephen getting into the ring against Nigel Ben. And we were waiting for the ring walk, right? And I only seen it on the telly the other night. And we're standing there. And next to it's fuck, a bit that cold in the tunnel, right? And Stephen's out there warming up, doing all his work. And we just want to get into that arena. And fucking 20,000 and odd people. It was rocking. Right, and he's gone mad to get in and go. And I remember Sky coming over. 
no, no, we're not ready, we're not ready, we're not ready. Right? Now, a weaker person could have got rattled. I think we could have been 10, 15 minutes waiting there. Mm. It didn't bother Stephen because he was unbelievable. He was unreal. Yeah. I've never met a more focused man. So that didn't rattle him. That inspired him. You know what I mean? He adapted to it, yeah. That's right. Nah, that's right. They must be have a problem here. They're trying to get, trying to get at us. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Mel, do you think Duff is in for a shock at, at Shells? Well, I said, I said recently, if Damien Duff leaves Shells, it won't be for results or football reasons. It'll be for all the other stuff. Yeah. Everything else that goes on. Yeah, well, he might be prepared great with his club and he has his house in order. They could arrive up to, I won't name any ground because I don't put anyone down, but it's possible because it's happened to me. Could arrive at a ground where the shares are cold. You know? You yeah. could arrive at a ground where the pitch is not playable, really. You could arrive at a ground where um, there's no heat in the dressing room. You know what I mean? No, you'll get over it and you'll put up it, but it gets you down and it can get at you. Yeah. Yeah. You know He's what I mean? trying to implement this high standard of football and quality and everything else that goes over. As you said, it's not just about what goes on the pitch, it's after and before and ah. preparation and what have you. He's trying to implement all that, like that full time professional lifestyle. Yeah. And everything else. It's and external factors shells. going against it. Yeah, it, it kills you. Honestly, yeah. it kills you. Like, I remember one game on Bowes and there was a f fella in there, an individual who didn't like me. Right, and I remember we were playing Derry, and funny, it was only on the telly the other night. It must have been an FAI Cup game, and I went down to get the kit, and I brought my son with me, and I counted it, and he counted it in a little room under the stand. So everything was perfect and left there. And the next morning, we went, got the kit and put it on the bus to travel. We got to Derry, we'd no nicks. We'd, we'd no nicks. You know what I mean? Someone took them out of the bag. We played dirty with blue nicks. It's on the telly the other night. I said, ah, Jesus. We had red and black, black, and, and their blue nicks. That was a conspiracy. Now, I could have let it get me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I said, Jesus, the blue looks, we have the black and red. Convinced. Yeah. <laughs> 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 At least if you had to pass with each other. But that happened, you know, like it's, honestly, it's fucking torture. Mm. Yeah. Torture. Right. Talk me. I just want to find out. So, your brother, obviously, world champion. Yeah. Well, what was it like the night became world champion for the family and oh. stuff like that? Do you know what, Terence? I hard to believe, right? It's hard. It's not, not, it, do you know what? I texted a fella last night. He texted me a little thing. I said, I still pinch myself. It was. Do you know I talk about pride? Yeah. People say you have children, you're, you're pride. Of course you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this was. A different level of pride. This was like, Jesus, my little brother is the champion of the world. It was unbelievable. Yeah. It was like, it was like, because we were reared on Muhammad Ali, Roberto Duran, Sugar Ray Robinson, you know, and like, it, a world champion boxer to us was someone up in the moon. Yeah. Not a young little cabaret. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was beyond, beyond your wildest dreams ever imagined that could no. happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, I watch a call it, oh Jesus, when they said, and the new, that one word new, oh my God. We went on the lash for about six years, but that <laughs> night, but that, but that night, right, that night, I don't think, I don't think we slept for about three days. It was unbelievable. And I, I, I was manager of Banger at the time, right? And I was trying to get in the job. We were playing Linfield that day. I'm nearly certain. And I hope I'm right, but I remember saying to the chairman that took me in, I said, my brother's boxing tonight, but I said, I'm going to walk around how I can be at the game and at the fight, right? So I heard a little private airplane, right, from Newton Erds to Farron 4. So I got my game in and I went straight to a little bleeding airstrip, right? And I brought a fella and his wife, another fella, and there was another fella in there fixing a petition and he heard we were going to say, can I bring him? Yeah, get on. So we all went down to the little blade near the plane. <laughs> right. And I went down and the pile got locked and he had a slot to go out the next day. I have to have a slot. And uh, he missed that and he missed the next one. So I think he got out the next day. But the hoy and oh God, you know, honestly, I swear to God, fellas, I tried to write it for what I'm doing. It's so hard to explain. Hmm. You know what I mean? It's so hard to explain. Like, 
don't know. It's just yeah. words, words. You know, I mean, little blood off a chase. He said, he used to want my side to bet me. Yeah. Then I'd sling him over to the other side and jump in. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, but he deserved it. Yeah. yeah. He was, oh my God. You're talking about dedication, determination, preparation. You name all these things I had to learn on courses. And guts. And guts. Oh, what a man. What a man. He was the toughest man. He still is the toughest man that's ever walked uh, this country, in my opinion, you know. And some of the most historic fights as well. Yeah. In Irish history. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like obviously, the big ones. Well, going down to that one, I mean, well, Caroline went down with all my families. Obviously, I flew down the next day, but she went down and she rang me. She said, right, it's unbelievable. She said, it's about 2,000 people at the weigh-in. Yeah. You know what mm. I mean? That was unheard. We barely get that fight at the time, you know? And when they come in on the big Harley Davis, and yeah. on, on your bike, on your bike, and everyone was there. You know, a week later, everyone was there. I mean, there was two million people there. Yeah. You know, we were on the lash. We were on the lash for six years. We walked, parties <laughs> were everywhere. It was great. <laughs> we had great cracking. You know, how are you, Rod? Yeah. Oh, I was in Mill Street that night. Oh, jeez, that's great. About four million, you know. Yeah, brilliant. But it was great. The question was, what did it feel like? I honestly, honestly, can't explain to you. You're you know, still it was, the words you know, now. The euphoria, the pride, the the sadness that my dad was in there, that was horrible, you know. That was horrible. But the pride that my uncle Terry was there, it was my dad's he boxed with us, you know. Mm-hmm. All the stuff rolled up, the pride for the whole family. It was just out of cabra. And for the country though as well. For the country as well, yeah, you know, and ah, it was brilliant. Brilliant. And Stephen and Alvin ring you up and say, put on Sky Gold. And he'd say, I can't believe that's me in that ring. It's mad. Yeah, and he'd say, yeah, we're having a ball. I was in fucking fighting, you know. <laughs> it was that was great. Brilliant. Yeah. Great journey it was, you know. Yeah. And you're in the middle of walking on something at the moment. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of doing a book at the minute yeah. with Paul Howard. So P- 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 I couldn't tell you about well, that's all you can tell us, yeah. Yeah, but you'll hear about it, and I'm sure you'll give me a little plug. Yeah, we oh, will. We will. Hope so, lads. I hope so. We'll, you I'll be plugging the, you. Yeah, you give us a copy of the book, we'll yeah, give you yeah. a plug. <laughs> we stick together those little dubs, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> now, you won't be famous down the country, by the way. It's the dubs. All right. <laughs> Boxed off yeah. now, I think, anyways. Yeah, we'll yeah. have to be in here about 12 hours at the Ruddy Fella. Yeah, yeah. go crack this for us, Ruddy. Thanks yeah. for coming in. We really yeah. do appreciate oh, that. Yeah. yeah. So don't forget, the word is 10. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh, here we oh no. I won't be able to go home. <laughs> Me daughter, Lauren. Oi, the lies of the party is by the way, right? Right. No ideas. Shout right. out to Lauren, you legend. Lauren, yeah. I'm Lauren, <laughs> Lauren I'm my little already. Lauren, who can lift 220 pounds. And I'll show you afterwards, right? So you'll know, 220 pound deadlift. Yeah. Right, and she's a little slip of a kid. Dear Anna, she said, Perry, yeah. Good yeah. luck. So Lauren, my little daughter. Shout out to Lord and you I nearly forgot. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You'd have been battered I'd when have you been got battered. home. Battered around my own house yeah. again. You would have been saying in Cabra and not Castle Knox tonight. That's it. That's it. <laughs> uh, All right. We right, wrap it up. So the word is tentative. Yeah. Get on. Tentative, yeah. Info at goaloudnow.com. Send her in. The last ever two pair of tickets. There they are, they are. Look at yeah. that. That's mad, isn't it? That's off the block of about 2,000 under the table, but there you yeah. go. <laughs> I know. I know. It's mad looking at that, do you know what I mean? Take a mask on all. Like. Get yeah. used to it, lads. Mm. Make me feel in Croker. Yeah. No, right, you never, we never Why seen not? any of these when I was younger. Well, there you go. Because you used to bunk in everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> right, we wrap it up. Take us out, Kino. Bill. Subscribe to this podcast for free on the Go Loud app. What you waiting for? The Hip Knocker.